I once found a rice so good, I had to have it. Hide. Beautiful screenshots, tons of features, active community, all of that stuff. So, I cloned the repo, ran the install script, and waited. When I logged back in, I was greeted by nothing. The default empty hyperland screen. No bar, no wallpaper, no config, everything I'd already built, gone. Displaced by a script I didn't understand, installing files I couldn't track, overwriting things I didn't know it would touch. And the worst part, I had no idea how to fix it, because I hadn't built any of it myself. I just copied. That was the day I learned something that changed how I approach Hyperland entirely. And if you're struggling right now, if it feels like every config breaks, every dot file fails, every setup is one reboot away from disaster, this video is going to fix that. Here's what most people do when they start with Hyperland, okay? They see a rice they like. They clone the dot files, they copy the whole dot config folder into their system. Maybe it works, maybe it doesn't. It's kind of like just rolling a die. If it doesn't, then they try another one. Rinse and repeat until something sticks. And even when it works, they don't actually know why it works. They can't customize it because they don't understand it. They can debug it because they didn't write it. They're not ricing, they're just borrowing someone else's rice and hoping it fits. This is the dot file trap. And it's why Hyperland feels so hard for so many people. Because Hyperland isn't actually hard. Configuring somebody else's setup that you don't understand, now that's hard. Debugging code you didn't write, that's hard. Trying to modify a system you can't read, that's hard. The fix isn't finding better dot files. The fix is stopping the chase entirely. Here's the first principle that changes everything. Write every single line of your config yourself. Not copy, not paste, write. I know that sounds slow, I know it sounds tedious, but here's what happens when you manually type out each line. You actually read it, you process it, you ask yourself, what does this do? And if you don't know, you look it up. That's learning. That's how the concepts get ingrained in your mind instead of just sitting in a file you'll forget about. When you copy paste a keybind, it's just text. However, when you write it yourself, let's say bind equals super comma t comma exec comma kitty, you actually understand the structure. Super is the modifier, t is the key. Exec means run a command. Kitty is the terminal. Now you can write any keybind because you understand the pattern. And this applies to everything. Window rules, animations, environment variables, monitor configs. Just write them yourself. Understand what they do and suddenly Hyperland stops being a black box. And if you want a structured path through all of this, every config section explained, every concept broken down so you actually understand it, that's exactly what I built Hyper Accelerator for. It walks you through Hyperland from first principles so that you're never just copying blindly. So if you want this, links in the description. But even if you don't go through this program right here, the principle stands. Just write every single line yourself. Now, the second principle. Patience isn't optional. Good rices take time. You need to accept that now. I see people trying to speed run their setup. They want the full rice, the bar, the animations, the wallpaper engine, notification daemon, lock screen, logout menu, all of that stuff all in one weekend, and then they wonder why nothing works and everything feels fragile. Here's the thing, every component you add is a new layer of complexity. If you consider this notification daemon, for example, this is Sway and C, that is another layer. If you consider this logout menu, that is another layer. If you consider the lock screen, this is hyperlock, that's another layer. If you consider Waybar, and perhaps if you're implementing something like a layout switcher, that is yet another layer. Okay, there's basically all these layers of complexity that keep getting added as soon as you decide to add a new tool or a new feature. And every tool has its own quirks and gotchas. If you try and learn all of them at once, you'll learn none of them well. The risers with the best setups, they build them over weeks, months sometimes. If I had to make this setup, honestly, to get the ideas and the inspiration, this I could easily say it took me weeks. From building the theme switcher here, to the layout switcher that you saw for Waybar, to this wallpaper switcher and everything, actually understanding how all of it works, yeah, I could easily say it took me a couple of weeks in order to make something like this. But what I did with this one, what I did right with this one especially, is I tried, uh, not just tried, but actually succeeded in implementing one tool, understanding it completely, configuring it properly first, and then moving on to the next one. The only thing is, Doing it this way means that some parts of your setup are going to be incomplete. So what I did in order to avoid that issue from cropping up is just do the bare minimum required in order to just have the functionality of any particular tool working, for example, Rafi, and then configure and customize it fully in detail and then move on to the next tool. That's what I did to still keep my setup usable whilst still being able to go deep and configure every single app myself, which is what finally enabled me to make this setup that you're seeing right here. 
So patience isn't a personality trait here. It's a strategy. It's how you build setups that don't break, that you can actually maintain, that you can debug even when something goes wrong. So slow down, add one thing at a time, master it before moving on, and your future self will thank you. Now, for the third principle, dot files are inspirational and not installational. Basically, this means use dot files for inspiration and not installation. This is the mindset shift that actually makes everything click. Once you see a rice that you like, don't clone it, study it, open their config and read it. Ask yourself, how did they get that animation curve? What's the Bezier curve doing over here? What actually are Bezier curves? Is that some math stuff or does it actually relate to computer science? Look at all of that stuff. Just look at the underlying core and guts of how actually stuff is supposed to work. What's the logic behind their window rules? How did they actually structure their key binds? Then close their dot files and implement the concept in your own config, in your own way, with your own understanding. This does two things. First, you actually learn. You're not just copying syntax, you're understanding the idea behind it and then translating it into your own setup. That's a completely different level of comprehension. And secondly, your rice becomes yours. It's not a clone of everyone else's setup, it's something that you built by hand. Something you understand and something you can evolve and maintain and be proud of. The best dot .files repos aren't instruction manuals, they're museums. You walk through them, get inspired, take notes, and then go build your own thing. Now, here's what happens when you follow these three principles. At first, you'll be slower than the copy-paste people. They'll have full rises in a day, you'll still be writing window rules by hand. But after a few weeks, something shifts. They're stuck. Something broke, and they don't know why. They're searching for GitHub issues for somebody else's fix. They're considering wiping everything and starting over, just like I did when I figured out that cloning was just not going to cut it. And you? You can debug your own config because you wrote it. You can add new components because you understand how they connect. You can look at any dot file and actually read it because you know the syntax, the patterns, the principles. That also allows you to expand to perhaps different desktop shells like QuickShell or AGS or any other tool like Fabric or any one of the most popular desktop shells that's out there. Because you understand the principles of your setup, you know exactly how to integrate it, and you don't have to sit around waiting for anybody's help. And that is the compound effect of learning properly. It's slower at the start and faster forever after. And if you want to accelerate this process, get the principles, the patterns, and the understanding without all the trial and error, Hyper Accelerator is built exactly for that. It's a program that I wish existed when I started. Here, for example, in this Theme Switchers module itself, which is over two hours long and took me over a week to make, I teach you exactly the fundamentals behind what Theme Switchers actually are, which is novelty on steroids in this case, and how to actually go about setting up something like this for yourself. If I were to show you the code part where we're actually writing this thing by hand, it's somewhere right over here at the end. So this entire Theme Switching system is based off of a script which deals with symlinks. If I were to show you a preview of that, that would look a little something like this. So that would be in config, color schemes, okay, right here. Okay, these are the different theme folders. So if I go to Capuchin, these are the different apps for which the theme is currently applied. And in here, the contain the files that's required for to actually make this theme work. For NeoVim, that would be the chadrc.lua because I'm using nvchad over here. And basically the same except different config files for the different apps, of course. So if you want to learn the principles of making a setup like this, and over four years of insights of me actually rising Hyperland for almost every single day, you can check the description. So stop chasing dot files, start learning principles, write every line yourself, be patient, one component at a time, use other people's configs for in inspiration and not installation. Do this for a month and Hyperland won't feel hard anymore. It'll feel like a tool you actually control. I post videos like this very often, so if you want more videos like this, just go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you like the video, you can hit like as well, and I will see you in the next one. Stay rising. Mwah.